You are exalted above the names. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Under the voice of the You are exalted above the names. Hello, a very good day to you. My name is Sister Temitayo. I'm a Christian content creator, and I'm here once again to share from the Open Heavens Daily Devotional compiled by the General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E.A. Adeboye. And the reason I'm sharing from this particular Christian book is because the Lord instructed me to do so as I prepare to enter into the year 2020. So this is my fifth year from of sharing the devotional. That's why we call it Season 5. And all those videos from 2020, they are all loaded on my YouTube channel. My handle on YouTube is Temi Agedo, which is right on the screen. I will encourage you to visit my channel, not only to view those old Open Heavens videos, which are a great study guide, but most importantly, to view the Open Heavens for the current day. And I know that will bless you exceedingly. And while you're on my channel, please don't forget to subscribe and the Lord bless you as you do. Now, Pastor E.A. Adeboye led me to Christ in October 1997, a few years back when I was in the University of Lagos, Nigeria, in West Africa. And Pastor gives you a few scriptures from the Bible and a memory verse, and that helps you to understand the body of the text. Praise God. So today is February the 1st. Hallelujah. And um, this is the first day of the beginning of the second, the second month of 2024. Praise God. And I remember that daddy used to say that two is the number of Jesus Christ because Jesus Christ is uh, the second, second in the, in the Godhead. And so any blessing that Jesus, the name of Jesus Christ brings in this second month, those blessings are ours in Jesus name. Praise the Lord. So happy, happy new months. And today again is Thursday, February the 1st. And the title of today's daily devotional is Becoming a Son of God, part two. Becoming a son of God, part two. Now, when we talk about son, son of God, you know, sons of God, um, so many scriptures come to mind that God made his ways known unto Moses, but he made his acts on, known unto the children of Israel. So he makes his ways known unto the sons, but to the children, he makes his ways known, no, his acts known unto them. So the children are always looking for acts. They're always looking for a sign. But, you know, the, the, the heels or the sons, the matured sons of God, they, they want to know God's ways, you know, they want to know what is in his heart. Do you understand? The children are always looking for acts. They don't have no understanding of what, what God is doing. They are babes, immature Christians, carnal Christians. So pastor is teaching us becoming a son of God. The earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the heroes, the sons of God. Um, so because this is this particular topic, this is part two we are sharing today, on Tuesday, we shared a title, a topic titled Servant or Son, you know, and uh, Daddy was differentiating between um, a servant and a son, two, you know, two differences. And that's why um, we, we don't accept being called servants of God. No, we're not servants. We're sons that serve. Praise God. Now, and yesterday we shared uh, Becoming a Son of God, part one. So I would encourage you that to, um, for you to be able to understand everything that, the Spirit of God is teaching us, go back to Tuesday and just watch through, binge watch, as I always say. Praise God. So becoming a son of God, part two. Now, the scriptural reading today is a very popular one. It's taken from the book of Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 to 17. Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 to 17. All right, and I'm going to be reading from the traditional King James Version. Which doesn't, you know, it's it's easier to understand. This one is okay. You know, sometimes I have to read from the modern translation, but this is particular, particularly sweet in the King James. So Exodus chapter 33, verses 12 to 17, and thus goes the reading of God's word. And Moses said unto the Lord, See thou sayest unto me, Bring up this people, and thou hast not let me know whom thou wilt send with me. Yet thou hast said, I know thee by name. And that has also and, and that has also found grace in my sight. Now therefore I pray thee, if I have found grace in thy sight, show me now thy way, that I may know thee, that I may find grace in thy sight, and consider that this nation is thy people. And he said, My presence shall go with thee, and I will give thee rest. And he said unto him, If thy presence go not with me, carry not, us not up hence. For wherein shall it be known here that I and thy people have found grace in thy sight? Is it not that thou goest with us? So shall we be separated, I and thy people, from all the people that are upon the face of the earth. 
And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do also this thing that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thee by name. Praise the Lord. Ah, oh, the very beautiful story. Moses, Moses, apart from our Lord Jesus Christ, Moses is my favorite um, character in the Bible. Apart from our Lord, our King, our God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord, our God, Jesus Christ. Moses is my favorite character. Any day, Moses is Moses, you know. This guy has been downloading information from the cloud way before Apple came to town. You know, Moses had a... He had a, an amazing relationship with God. He was an amazing man. He was an, an amazing um, Christian, put it that way. And so, you know, um, he, he, Moses is asking the Lord that, um, he said, you say, you say, he was telling God, he was talking to, as a man speaks to his friend, what we told him I speak face to face, he said to God, he said, you know, if I found grace in your sight, tell me who you are sending with us to go into the promised land because God was angry with the people and he had said, Moses, your, your people whom you brought out of Egypt, which he said in one of the chapters, you know, he said, Moses, your people that you brought out of Egypt that was during the golden calf, you know. So Moses said, your people, yeah, they are your people, you know. So God was angry with them. He was angry with them and rightly so because they were very, very stiff-necked, you know. And so Moses said, you know, if, you're, if you, you say we should go into the promised land, you have not told me who you're going to send with us and you say i found grace in your sight so god then said to him my presence shall go with thee and i'll give the rest he knew that god was not really happy with the children of israel so moses said if you will not go with us then we will not go because the difference between us and other nations in the world is that your presence you you go with us they know that you are in the midst of us in fact there was one time that the philistines were fighting uh, Israel, when they heard that the camp, the Ark of the Covenant had come into the camp because they heard Israel shout, so they were afraid. They said God had come into the camp. So Moses was saying that, you know, if you if your presence does not go, we will not go up then. So God said, you know, my presence will go with you. When God's presence is with a person, no devil can stand before you. When God sends you, no devil can stop you. The Bible says, tremble thou art at the presence of the Lord. And you know, because when they were coming out of Egypt, God said, I've sent my angel before you. You know, and the Bible tells us that when they were inside the Red Sea and the right, you know, they were going through the angel of the Lord that was before them came behind them. Do you understand? So Moses was now committing God's, God's presence that one, once God is with them, there's nothing, there's no problem. You know, he said, I will go before you. I'll make the crooked places straight and the rough roads smooth, you know. When God sends us, you know, no devil can stop us because God's presence, you know, is um, hmm, no force in hell can stand against God's presence. No force in hell under the earth or on earth can stand the presence of God. Praise. So becoming a son of God. Hmm. And he said, um, you have found, and Moses said, I will do this thing. And the Lord said unto Moses, I will do this thing also that thou hast spoken for thou hast found grace in my sight. And I know thee by name. Or may we find grace, may, Lord, may, help us so we can find grace in your sight and that you know us by name, in Jesus' name. Help us to have this kind of relationship with you that you had with Moses in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Becoming a son of God, part two. Now, the memory verse is taken from John chapter 8, verse 35. John chapter 8, verse 35, and it says, And the servant abided not in the house forever, but the son abided Ever. And that's Jesus talking. So Jesus Christ in that in this verse is differentiating between a servant and a son. And in the previous days, past, uh, Jesus Jesus said that you know a servant uh, does not. He doesn't. Okay, no pastor was explaining. He said a servant is only he only calls when he's come, when he, he only comes to the presence of the master when he's called. But a son always abides. You know, praise the Lord. Now pastor says a son dwells in the house of God. He does not come and go. He dwells in the presence of the Father. Many people come and go from the presence of God. The sons are the ones that abide in his presence wherever they go. They ensure that his presence is with them. And you know, the, the, so sin, sin is a very ter terrible thing. Thank God for, we thank heavenly, the Heavenly Father for sending our Lord Jesus Christ to die for our sins. Sin, the Bible says that uh, Adam and Eve were driven from the presence of God. You know, they were driven from from Eden, were driven from the presence of God. Satan went from the presence of God. God forbid, may we never leave the presence of God. 
one thing have I desired of the Lord, David said, that will I seek after that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his holy temple. The son dwells in the, in the house of God. The servant does not dwell permanently. In fact, when, a, he's, a, when a, 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 a lion comes against the sheep, you know, it's the son who, who came, who, who stays. The hireling goes. Praise the Lord. So, um, servant or son, which are you? How do you remain in the presence of God? Question. First, you don't joke with your quiet time with him. That is when it is just you and him in the morning conversing. That is when you study your Bible and pray. You should start your day with him and become addicted. Oh, I love that word. Come on. I'm going to underline that. Addicted to speaking to him every morning. Beyond that, don't make any decision without first asking for his input. You should ask him for which outfit to wear, mm -hmm, which routes to take on your way to work, yes, and so on. When you live basically on his voice, you are dwelling in his presence continually. Psalm, okay, praise the Lord. Let's, so let's, let's, let's deal with that. So don't joke, number one. So how do we remain in God's presence? You know, um, as soon as you have given your heart to Christ, we must give our hearts to Christ. God gives us the gift of the Holy Spirit. There's now a hunger and a thirst to know God more. You understand? Make sure that that hunger and that thirst does not die. You know, um, I will encourage you because you need to know more about God. You need to, you know, build your relationship. You need to follow hard after God. We need, we need continually. Um, so say continually. Let the Lord be magnified. Amen. So you, we must spend time with God. Don't joke with it. Anything that can separate us from our fellowship, our quiet time with God is out to destroy us. Sleep, friends, parties, you know, anything that can separate you from the, you know, even church services that go on and on and on that you don't have time to wake up and read your Bible or to pray at night. You know, those are very uh, uh, dangerous. So don't joke with your quiet time. Just you and God, not you, your wife. Sometimes you can get your wife and your husband involved, but one on one, you know, when it comes to worship, we go in one by one. You know, not, don't joke with your quiet time. Um, you know, that's when you study your Bible, you sing a song, you talk to him as a man speaks to his friend. That's what Moses did. That's what our father Abraham Ham did. They would go, they were, the Bible says early in the morning, Abraham would go to the place where he stands, he stood before God, you know. Uh, so um, he says you should start your day with him and become addicted to speaking to him every morning. Now, this is the reality. You know, sometimes people get into bed late. Hmm? People get into bed late. So if you get into bed late, you are not going to be able to wake up in the morning to speak to God. You do you understand? And um, early will I seek you. The Bible says, David said, early will I seek you. So in the morning, the Bible says the message are new every morning. There's something about speaking to the Lord in the morning. You know, so you want to reorganize your time, reorganize your time, you know, and make sure that you are okay at that time. Not, don't let anything take that time from you where you can come out of the room, go and sit on the staircase, go downstairs or, you know, just sit in your car, something, just you and God. You should start your day with him and become addicted to speaking to him every morning. In fact, we should become, become addicted to speaking to him per second per second. You know, praise the Lord. I pray that the Holy Ghost will help us to become addicted to his presence. That as the deer panted after the water brooks, that so our soul will pant after the word of God and his spirit all the days of our lives in Jesus' name. You know, so you have to, it's non-negotiable, you know. And if you're, if you're you, you can ask, I, I used to pray that God help me to have, give me grace for continuous, for a rich, thick, continuous fellowship with the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. Yeah, so... Psalm, one, Psalm 10 verse 4 says that those who don't have God in all their thoughts are proud and wicked. God must be in all our thoughts. He must be the motivation behind everything we do. He must be the motivation behind everything we do. Everything we do must be, must be done for his glory. In 1 Corinthians 10 31, it says, Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. You know, so God must, the Bible says that of the wicked, that God is in none of, in none of his thoughts. But God must continually be in our thoughts. You understand? And the more we fellowship with the word of God, the more that becomes possible. You know, God must do everything. The motive, what is the motive behind what I'm doing? I'm doing it because God sent me. And because um, I, want to, I want people to know about our Lord Jesus Christ. 
Okay, so then what is the motive for what you are doing? You know, is it because you want to make money or you want to be seen or you want to be noticed? You know, why are you doing, why do we do the things we do? We have to readdress our motive at every point in time. We address our motive. Whatever we do, we must do all for the glory of God. A son is always seeking to glorify his father's name. He never wants to do anything that will make people say, and you call yourself a child of God. As such, he lives conscious of who he is. He doesn't do anything, doesn't do anything that is outside the leading of his father because he never wants to leave the presence of his father. You know, some people have, um, the Bible says in the book of Romans that the name of God is dragged, is um, abused because of those people, those supposed Christians. That's not our portion in Jesus' name. You know, that a Christian does something. You say you're a Christian, you go to church, and then you go and steal billions, billions of dollars, billions of naira. You know, you have dragged the name of Jesus Christ. They are showing you, as you are giving testimony in church, meanwhile, you are a thief and you're a robber. You just dressed up in nicely. You know, you are dragging the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you know. Um, but that's not our portion in Jesus. And we're supposed to, um, the Bible talks about um, John the Baptist that was a burning and a shining like light. May God make us make us a burning and shining light. You understand that um, Jesus Christ said that men may see our good works and glorify our Father in heaven. That's what a son does, you know. That's what a son does. So grow up, grow up. How long? Put, put, come out from amongst them and be separate the bible said let every man that named the name of christ let him depart from iniquity we should not put forth our hands into iniquity because we are christians there's some things we cannot do we cannot be collecting bribes we cannot be lying and you know stealing and doing things that are not you know rape cases your name is they say you are you are a this you are a christian he says a christian he says a pastor you know god forbid that's not our testimony will not be destroyed in the name of jesus christ the bible says dead flies cause the apothecary to send forth a stinking savour so a little folly to him that is known held up in for glory and honor you know we come against every dead fly that wants to destroy the fragrance of christ in our lives we come against it by the blood of jesus christ in jesus name of course there are wicked people in the world who um anything christian they want to drag and destroy you know um but that's not our portion in Jesus' name. When you read Mark chapter 15, verses 34 to 37, you will see that it was when Jesus saw that the Father had forsaken him that he gave up the ghost. So Pastor says in the last line, he says, a, a son doesn't do anything that is outside the leading of his father. Don't if God did not send you, don't do it. When you read Mark 15, 34 to 37, you see that it was when Jesus saw that the father had forsaken him, that he gave up the ghost. He could bear all the pain as long as God was with him. But the moment that he saw that he was no longer in the presence of the father, he gave up the ghost. That is how addicted we must become to God's presence. If you are a son of God abiding in his presence, if you are a son of God abiding in his presence, it must be like breathing to you. We cannot afford to miss God. You understand? You must, do you understand? You must, whatever the cost. The Bible says in the book of Joshua that Joshua uh, marched all night. Do you understand? Because God had promised him victory. He marched all night. In the same way, whatever it takes for, for us to um, keep on top of our, spirit, our relationship with Jesus Christ, we must march all night. That means we must stretch. The Holy Spirit gives us the grace to stretch. Okay? You know, so you may be tired uh and you wake up at night you need to pray the spirit of god you must pray because we need that presence we need to be drinking from the presence of god you know your lunch break you want to take some time to eat yeah but we need you can use that time to join uh your prayer group and just pray it, it's costing us something our relationship is costing us something you understand we must if you are a son of god abiding in his presence must be like breathing to you ask god we ask god for help you understand because you can be very busy genuinely busy you know i think gloria copeland had three children and she went to meet ken papa ken hagen and said to him you know it's too much stress and papa ken hagen said to her go to ephesians 1 from verse 16 to 20 and read it every day i pray that the god of my lord jesus christ the father of glory will give unto me the spirit of wisdom and revelation so as you're washing place taking care of the children I keep saying it and she kept saying it and she kept saying it and the grace of god did something great in her life if you are a son, abiding in his presence will be like breathing. So God will begin, the Holy Ghost will begin to give you ideas, begin to make room for he's our helper. Praise the Lord. Reflection. How attached are you to the one you call your father? Don't miss church. 
Let me stretch because that's where God empowers you. He strengthens you. You know, um, maybe you are not able to pray for some reason. Your heart is bothered. When you get to the house of God, there's an anointing. Do you understand? And you need to drink of that anointing. Praise the Lord. You need to um, attend your own. You know, just God, God does. God will give us the grace to do what we need to do to foster our relationship with him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we say thank you for this word that you've given to us. We are hearers and doers of your word. Father, we pray for the grace for continuous fellowship with your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we ask for grace to give ourselves continually to pray unto the ministry of God's word. Father, every burden that the enemy has laid upon your people that is making it hard to fellowship, to pray. Father, I the Bible says the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. So let every yoke that is hindering your children, every burden, every weakness, every sickness that is making it impossible to pray and to fellowship, let it be destroyed by the power of your Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus Christ. Let every burden be lifted. Father, Lord, let your grace abound towards us in Jesus' name. Help us to become addicted. Holy Ghost, help us to become addicted to you, addicted to the word of God all the days of our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Thank you. <laughs> I've gone over the 20 minutes. I've gone over 20 minutes. Thank you so much for taking time to listen to me. I hope this blessed you. I know it did. And I give you permission to share it freely on the social media platforms. And God bless you as you do. And may the Lord give us grace for continuous and wisdom for continuous fellowship with the Holy Spirit. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Share, share, share. And God bless you as you do. I'll see you tomorrow. My name again is Sister Tim Tayo. And do not forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. God bless you as you do.